One game remains in this 2014 season. It is shocking. It is stunning. It is reality. We welcome you into the studio, Dave Spadaro, joined by the voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Merrill Reese. And, um, I mean, Merrill, uh, I think you would agree, stunning, shocking, and reality. All of the above, and I, I often don't like reality. And in this case, I certainly don't like the fact that there are no playoff games for the Eagles this year. The thing that makes it so difficult to accept, Dave, is it seemed like yesterday when we were just celebrating a phenomenal win in Dallas. That Thanksgiving Day bashing of the Cowboys was phenomenal. And it wasn't a matter of will the Eagles make the playoffs. We were all talking about can they be the first seed? And then, all right, they lost to a very, very good Seattle team. And then they came back from a 21-0 deficit, led the Cowboys 24-21, and when they blew that lead, I think the entire season changed. I thought that was the critical moment of the season, and if you look back, that is what did them in. So where, in, in December, as we know, you've got to raise your game. Yeah. These are playoff type. In what areas, Merrill, would you point to and say the Eagles did not raise their game? Well, certainly in the secondary, uh, that was a problem, giving up what they referred to as the X plays, the long plays that happened with Des Bryant. It happened in Washington with Deshaun Jackson. They were unable to alleviate their propensity for turning into the football. It happened time and time again, and it really hurt them. And another thing, Dave, earlier in the season, the special teams were making plays. They were not only stopping the opposition, they were scoring points on blocks and recoveries, and suddenly that dried up. It's not something you can depend on. And I'm not saying that the special teams play was poor. I'm just saying that they were no longer productive from a point standpoint. And when you look back at the season, maybe that masked some deficiencies that the Eagles had earlier. No question about it. You look big picture here, Merrill, obviously with one game to go. Uh, there's still a lot here. There's still a lot of good pieces mm -hmm. in place here. Um, uh, what does Sunday mean to you, first of all? It means another opportunity to climb up into the broadcast booth and broadcast my favorite sport in the world. It's an Eagles-Giants game. I will look at it as an Eagles-Giants game, mm -hmm. which is fun to broadcast. I realize that in in terms of implications, there are none in terms of the playoffs, but uh, I still want to see a good football game because I enjoy a good football game. Do you feel like the Eagles will be honed in for this one? They're professionals, and every professional football player is judged not on a game, but on a snap on snap by snap by snap. They're going to be judged on their performance on every single play, and it will affect the evaluation in the off season. It will affect their futures. They're still playing against the division rival, and they're playing against the Giants team that has won three consecutive games. I would like nothing more than to win for their coach, Tom Coughlin, who Rumors abound that this might be his last game as a coach in the NFL, that he may decide to uh, call it a career. I hope not. I hope that Tom Coughlin says, hey, you know what? I want to be around Odell Beckham some more. I want to be around some of these guys that that won the last three games. And because uh, I, I like Tom Coughlin, because I'd like to see his winning streak stop this week. But uh, he, he might surprise you and come back. But regardless, the thought is out there that it could be his last game. And 
It could be the old, let's get one for the Gipper. Or in this case, let's get one for Tom. A big question, uh, picture for you, a big picture question for you. Uh, or whatever it's, that it's, is. It's what everybody's talking about, the quarterback position as you look ahead. Um, tell me how you would like to see this quarterback picture play out. I haven't changed. I have believed for some time that Nick Foles is the quarterback of the future for the Eagles. I believe that he is capable of being a franchise quarterback. I saw good stretches with Nick during the early part of the season. Before the injury, I also saw too many interceptions. I also saw him play behind an offensive line that was not at that point what it was a year ago when all five pieces remain healthy for 16 games. So I think that Nick has to grow. Um, I saw Peyton Manning the other night throw four interceptions in a big game against Cincinnati. I see the best quarterbacks throw interceptions at the, at the worst possible times. It's part of it. And in Nick's case, it's part of the growing process. But I believe that Nick Foles can be and will be a winning quarterback for this franchise. And the backup quarterback? Uh, remains to be seen. I think that uh, Mark Sanchez was a, was a great guy to have in an emergency this year. I thought he did very well. If you look at the Washington game, he did so many things well, and yet when all was said and done, he threw the pass that ended the Eagles' chances at the worst possible time. Merle Reesby, thank you for joining us in the studio. Have a great broadcast on Sunday. I know it's a, a tough and sudden ending for you, just like it is for everybody. But it's football, it's NFL football, it's Eagles football, and I look forward to it. Merle Reese, thanks so much for joining us in studio on PhiladelphiaEagles.com.